Good evening, I'm Alonzo Kanagawa, and I wanted to... No, I'm not here with the police. I'm here to ask you some questions regarding your best friend. They were one of the first people to go missing, and I'm trying to figure out where they may be. I'm a reporter with the local news station. Wait, please... I'm not here as a reporter. I'm here as someone trying to figure out what's going on. That's fair, and I promise I'm not here to use you for anything. I just want to know what's going on. Look, I promise I have nothing on me to record this. It's all off the record. I just want to find these people. My job is to report on the news, but getting interviews from people who are grieving isn't really my style, nor is it actual tenable news. Oh, my boss hates me. She kind of wishes I would drop the whole Pierre Hardy journalist chick and... I'm pretty sure she's at least considering firing me once every day. Well, you did ask. I spoke to the cops and they won't tell me anything because, you know, they're cops. And also, I'm with the media, so they won't tell me shit. Well, I figured that if I can't talk to the police, I might as well talk to the people themselves and see what happens. Terribly, actually. For one of the reason or another. Someone either doesn't have details or they don't want to talk to me. I swear I'm not going to be recording this. I just need the truth to know where all this is going and if I can help any of the people affected by this. Why? Well, to be honest, it's the one thing I think I can do here. My partner works night shifts and they're usually up and about around the same time as all the victims who are taken, including your best friend. And I want to make sure they're going to be okay. I want to help find the people who are missing and I want to find who's responsible. They're a freelance night guard. I know. I tease them about how fake it sounds all the time, but surprise, surprise, it actually is a job that exists. How close were you two? Wow. You guys have been friends since high school. You shouldn't blame yourself for what happened. You couldn't have known what was going to happen. You're right, that is easy for me to say. Especially because I don't know what it's like. But would your friend want you to blame yourself like that? I can't begin to imagine how it felt to have this happen to your best friend when you're the reason they moved out here. And I don't know them, but if you two are as close as you say, then I don't think they'd want you talking about yourself like that. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me in. The additional threat is noted and taken at face value. May I sit? Thanks. Yes, I'm ready to start when you are. All the info that the police have released says that your friend was seen at a local 7-Eleven. Can you confirm the time and date you last had contact with them? Okay, thanks. 
it's become apparent that who's ever taking these people is doing so under the cover of night. Their time range is between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m., which confirms that they're part of the kidnappings that's been going on. Well, technically they may not be the first, but certainly they're the first who might be alive. But they're not the first. Well, there's been someone who's been going around and attacking folks across the country going from state to state and killing people. Usually they'd snatch up their victims and the poor souls would pop up the next morning dead with their throats ripped out in the exact spot they were attacked and left for the cops to find out in broad daylight. Sorry, it's a bad habit for me to go on rambling about less than savory details. But the point is that the kidnappings like these are a completely different tactic than before when they were previously just straight up murders. That's a great question. I can confirm they're all the same person based on the times, radius of kidnappings, and the seemingly randomness across all instances. Which means that whoever this is, while they were just outright attacking people before, now they're kidnapping them instead. Which either means they want to change tactics to confuse the authorities and break their pre-established connection, or... They're doing something different. In either case, with how many people they've been kidnapping over almost a month's worth of time, they've created enough of a pattern to be dissected. I'm a reporter. It's technically my job to be this good at sniffing around for trails. I'm afraid I can't tell you much more than the fact that I think they're alive. Because I just don't know if there's anything more to it than that. And I don't want to go around saying stuff without definitive proof of it. I told you that much because these are facts that I can prove. And they just so happen to be facts which got you to relax a little. Yeah. I mean, now you look less like you want to rip my throat out with your teeth, so I call that a win. Can I ask you a few more questions? Was your friend a smoker? Stress relief. Did they have a taxing job? Oh, yeah, no, I've been there before. I didn't pick up smoking, but I'd probably start to if I stayed in the customer service industry for too long. Do you happen to know what their favorite brand of cigarettes was? Huh. No, don't worry about it. Shall we continue? Audio Journal Update 28 I still have no real proof that the victims of the recent kidnappings are still alive, but I'm keeping my hopes up. Initially I had suspected the Road Trip Reaper, well, Reapers, would strike here again and move on, but recent events have proven that might not be the case. I don't have bodies to confirm exactly whether or not it's them. They have specific methods of killing people that looks like animal attacks, but the wounds inflicted on them were too precise in how they were attacked to seem like it. Sure, there's the traditional lunges for the neck, but there was no evidence of struggle on. There were scratches that made it look like the animals would have scuffed with the victims, but there was no sign of animal DNA or DNA of any kind that would have been indicative of a fight even happening. I doubt someone would just let themselves get killed. Not to mention that some of the bodies seem to have been suffocated like a snake. But snakes don't have claws, and any snake big enough to squeeze a whole human body to death won't just squeeze the neck. They'd wrap around the entire person and crush them. There are too many inconsistencies to chalk it up to just animal attacks. Aside from that, there's a consistency between the murders and these kidnappings that I can't ignore. 
They are all spread out across a specific five mile radius. Whoever is going after these people has a method to it. They won't do anything past that radius, and even though they're typically scattered across different locations, that range remains a constant. Even now, the pattern is evident. They're taking people largely from the French Quarter. While it did confuse me at first because these kidnappings seemed all over the place, I then realized that the radius was still the same. There were just different center points on the radius. Like, there were three different spots that were set up when the people were taken from. This at least confirms that they have multiple reapers, but what is their motive? And besides the victims' families, I've got nothing to work with. Oh, shit. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going. Are you alright? I'm fine. Yourself? I'm all good. Sorry about bumping into you. Have a good day. You too. Hey, Sherlock. I know that it's late. Don't worry, I'm on my way home. Yeah, I got the stuff Uriah wanted earlier. I didn't want her to kill me for not getting the extra plates. Hi, kid. I know he would kill me. I think. Would they kill me? That's not a comforting answer. Whatever. I'll be home to chastise you soon. I love you too. Bye.